If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. And if you need any code cards, make sure you check out Potown Store for automatic email delivery and use code TABLEMONTH for 5% off all your purchases. If you're from Europe, MealyBotsGaming.com is a great option to get your cards from. They have all sorts of sealed products, merchandise, and all the sets available from Pokemon Sun and Moon upwards, including the latest Hidden Fate set. Don't forget to use Tailmon code when checking out to get a further 5% off from your final purchase. Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to the Your Worlds 2020. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are going to be continuing with our coverage of regional stacks as we head into Knoxville. Very eager to see what does well over in Tennessee. But for now, we are going to keep with our coverage of the decks that did well. Maybe some of you are considering these decks and enjoy watching the gameplay. Or you want to get to see a little bit of these, a little bit more of these unorthodox decks getting played right here. So we are going to be taking a look at this fossil stack, which is based on mostly Caracosta and Pterodactyl. Um, Caracosta has 160 HP, a very nice number, for example, against things like Garbor Sylvan, which hits for 150. You are 10 HP above that threshold. So 160 becoming the norm pretty much now um, for viability in terms of stage two cards are not GX. And we have the ability Ancient Custom where Pokemon tool cards attached to your opponent's Pokemon have no effect. So no skateboards, no spell tags, um, no expert belts, no karate belt, no nothing. And then we have the Aqua Impact attack which deals 80 damage plus 20 more damage for each colorless in your opponent's active Pokemon retreat cost. A really nice, um, a really nice attack. Um, it immediately one hit KOs Reshizard, which is amazing, and um, Aerodactyl GX, of course, one hit KOs Pigram. So you have two very good counters to some of the top decks being played right now. We have, of course, Aerodactyl GX with a 210 HP. The ability Primal Wins, forcing your opponent to um, use one more colorless energy if it's a basic Pokemon to attack. So as you can see, um, these the theme of the fossils right now is to really limit what your opponent can do. Our Dactyl adds energy. Uh, Caracosta limits um, Caracosta limits um, tool cards, and then we have Omastar limiting item cards, and we have Cabotops limiting supporter cards. So a pretty nice way to play around um, with the different Pokemon available. We have the Boulder Crush attack deal 120 times two for weaknesses to 40, so perfect numbers on Picarum. Um, other than that, it's not very outstanding damage, but definitely useful. And then we have the Wild Type GX attack, which does 50 damage times the amount of energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. So you might be able to punish something like a um, like a Mew Mew that had three en uh, six energy, it's a Rishisar that had six energies, etc. And then we have this era this other Aerodactyl which has a supersonic attack where you get to confuse your opponent's Pokemon, which can be sometimes useful, especially with no skateboard being available for your opponent thanks to Caracosta. But more importantly, you have a Fossil Fanged attack, which does 90 damage. And if you don't have any GX or EX on your bench, then this attack does 90 more damage. So you just have to be careful with your Aerodactyls. Now, the engine does rely on Welder to accelerate energy to power up both attackers, but we also rely on build analysis to make sure that um, we find our stadium and start setting up our fossils on the bench as soon as possible. The fossil, I mean, the stadium that I'm talking about is Pokemon Research Lab, where once you're in a turn before you attack, you may search your deck for two Pokemon that evolve from an from unidentified fossil and place them onto your bench, and then your turn does indeed end. Um, utility wise, we have Energy Spinner to find the energies along with Giant Heart. We have Martial Arts Dojo to increase our damage output. We have Custom Catchers, of course, to try and target down the right Pokemon, and we have Pokemon Search in the form of Pokemon Communication, we have the Unidentified Fossil to serve as basics, and we have Recess Stamp, Stadium Naps, and Switching Cards along with the Skateboards to play around with our Jirachi. So let's jump into the ladder and see what we can do with this 
boss little stack. Can we continue our streak? Can we not? We shall see. We shall see. A lot of you have been asking when I'll be back to streaming. Maybe at some point during this week. I'll try and be back to streaming. We'll see. Right. So I do manage to win the coin flip. I will definitely choose to go first. No reason not to. And unidentified fossil, despite it being able to be played as a, as a basic Pokemon, it is in fact a trainer card on your first turn. Therefore, it cannot be chosen as my basic, and I'm very glad because that hand was actually hideous. So is this one, right? So is this one. We are running 13 energies, and we just drop four of them in our starting hand. Not ideal. But we have our top deck, and we also have Stellarish, so... Not the end of the world. That unidentified fossil is pretty useful. I guess I'll grab the energy spinner. Now this is certainly a little bit annoying. We are up against PG Control. I don't know why that deck has gained so much popularity in the latter over the last few days. Um, I will be able to start powering up the fossil, which is nice. Um, Cargo Stash should be KOing all the Pokemon on my opponent's bench every time, right? So that's good. You see the Crushing Hammer head flip. <laughs> immediately. Immediately. Super, super annoying. We see a PG and double Pidgeotto for my opponent next turn. Because we didn't get the Stadium, we cannot um, pressure with Aqua Impact. Next turn, it would have been fantastic to start taking prizes over the course of the next few turns. Now, in order to do that, we are going to need a welder, which we don't find, so that's pretty okay. That's pretty okay. I'm gonna go ahead and welder onto the fossil. And all right, so not the best, right? Not the best, but I mean, I'm getting somewhere, right? Now I have my Tortuga or I just grab Aerodactyl. Yeah, that way I'm not restricted by the energies. And Aerodactyl also one it kills everything on my opponent's side of the field. There's no tool cards that my opponent will be using, I don't think, that are impactful. So this seems okay. This definitely seems okay. I'll just go ahead and pass. I, there was merit using the reset stamp. There, this was actually probably the best turn to use the reset stamp, I imagine. Because we knew three of two of my opponents seven cards. Oh well, not much I can do about it. Now I just need a switching card. I need an escape board or I need a build analysis. The cryogonal is going to be annoying. Because then we won't be able to play any item cards. I could just attach and retreat, right? To start taking prizes. Don't mind that too much. Supersonic is even useful against the Ranguru, but perhaps this isn't quite Pidgey Control, but more... Oh, well that's annoying. Maybe this isn't Pidgey Control and it's more Pidgey, I mean, Cryogonal Lock. Two out of two heads for my opponent, like I said, incredibly annoying. Now I basically need to switch to start attacking, otherwise I will have another turn of no prizes here. Another turn of double. On our turn of no prizes. Super, super annoying. That Absol, jeez. Okay. PG and Pichotto, Quad Pichotto coming up for my opponent very soon here. Very, very soon, and there's the pass. All right, so can I? I feel like, yeah, I should build first. Does it even matter? Well, that helps, that certainly helps. And then so does the spinner. I can't believe my opponent flipped double heads though. It's so annoying. And then Stellar Wish, I'll grab the bills. All right, so I'm gonna attach. I'm gonna energy spinner. Get the fighting energy. 
Are they my pass, right? Yeah, are they my pass. So let's see what we can do here. Can we finally get a prize next turn? If my opponent flipped average, then we would have painted an okay spot. I should have attached the escape board. I, in fact, should have attached the escape board to prevent the cryogenol from punishing me for that. That was a small mistake. Hopefully, I don't get punished. That was a mistake. No reason to hold on to the escape board. Well, there is a reason, right? Fava, but. Two crushing hammers down. Hopefully, that's all we see so far. I do have a feeling my opponent will continually custom capture my Jirachi, though, which is annoying, of course. And then we also have to worry about a um, Articuno at some point. So basically after I attack once, my opponent will have six turns to, to try and get rid of all my energies. And with the Fire Crystal, I'm feeling confident that I'll be able to beat my opponent. Getting the KO on the... Um, Getting the KO on the... Um, there we go, that's a pretty nice card to get. Getting the KO immediately under Kuno will be pretty useful. We'll go ahead and grab the Energy Spinner. Well, should have grabbed the Custom Catcher. Is there Merit to KO with the Absol? I feel like there is. I feel like there's Merit to KO in the Absol. However, there's also Merit to eliminate the Energy. Grab the giant hearts and the builds. So, do I KO the Absol? Do I KO the Cryogonal or do I just eliminate the Pidgeotto? I'm kind of liking eliminating the Pidgeotto. I'm kind of liking eliminating the Pidgeotto. I will get Pyre's ener Pyre Energies off of my out of my deck though, so that I have access to Wilder. I do have one Wilder priced. I'm about to start taking prizes. So my opponent has chosen cards, right? Off of the airmail. So I'm gonna go ahead and play the reset stamp now. Completely reset his hand, whatever he was planning, now he needs to formulate a new plan. And let's go for the fossil fangs here. 180 damage. We are one Wilder away from just return KOing. Articuno. We'll see though, because if we get reset stamped and then our hand starts getting discarded. The Articuno is the biggest threat right here, 100%. Power plant and Ranguru, that's not a big deal. The power plant makes the Articuno less threatening. Definitely less threatening. One less air mill, also good. One less air mill, also good. Okay. So it's gonna be a while. Backbike. So there is a time pretty non-impactful, but what can you do? What can you do about that? Okay. Okay, 
Pushing Emmer, how about it? Two for one. Talk bad. Double surge, that makes sense. And I can definitely see how my opponent will end up winning this game though. It's all about the reset stamp plus Reset Stamp plus the Mars and the Jesse and James. There's a first Reset Stamp from him. That does stop me from sniping the Oranguru, meaning he can start putting back resources. I was definitely considering going after the Oranguru. I think that would have made sense. Jesse and James, I don't mind getting rid of that. No wheezing, but yes, Spirit Tomb. To support your cards from your Discord Bell into your hand. Okay, if any puts a basic opponent can't attack during your opponent's next turn. Oh wow. That spirit of is pretty terrifying in in this tag team deck for sure. I mean again in this tag team format. And there's a victory. Um I guess my opponent just wasn't feeling like playing that out. I mean, over the course of a long game, I'm pretty sure my opponent would have beaten me. But I mean we'll take that, right? We will definitely take that. So, let's go ahead and find our next game. Go ahead and find our next game. Okay. So, we should be up against Ability Reshi, I'd imagine. So this is where we're going to have a much more aggressive battle of the powerhouses. We turned up mulliganing at least once, giving my opponent extra information. He also mulligans as well. Hmm. Very decent hand, actually. Very, very decent hand, especially if my opponent ends up playing Giant Heart first. So that definitely makes it very happy. Right of the bat, welder for two fires. There's a Jirachi, there's another fire. You might just see a switch here or a data change. Well, never mind. So you charge for a Heatran, Heatran back for Vulpix. Yep. And then we see a pass. So Stellwish. Kind of annoying. Kind of annoying. I feel like I need to conserve my Jirachi alive, or at least force him to have like the Nine Tails. So I'll go ahead and bench the Fossil. I will have to Welder onto it, which I'm not super happy about. Right. So I'm totally grabbing that. Wrong stadium, though. Wrong stadium. So do I even attach energy? I don't think I do. Yeah, the issue is I really don't threaten the Reshi's art next turn. I really don't. I really, really, really don't. Alright, so we just see the double plays. No energy even for my opponent. We will take that. <laughs> One card off. One card off. Let's go ahead and Stellar Wish. Um, I might want to research lab twice. 
No, I'll grab the... Oh! Well, I'll grab this. Okay, so then... I mean, do I even attach energy? I feel like I don't. I'll just go Pokemon Research Lab. Get double tier 2 guy. That should be a big enough threat against my opponent. We shall see though. We shall see. Martial Arts Dojo plus our Dactyl is a KO on the Hedron, so... Wow, we just see the retreat into the Fire Crystal, so my opponent knows he's about to get knocked out. Or assumes as much. I mean, that makes sense, right? That definitely makes sense. <clears throat> Puts back the two welders. But now that he's out of his GX attack, I actually don't mind this too much. If I get this KO, then I'm not really threatened by him. And eliminating the energy is definitely the right way to go here. So let's go ahead and welder. Two onto this person. And we do find the Caracosta. Perfect. This is basically going to be game, I'd say. Aqua Impact. Knock out the Hedron. By a lot, doing enough damage to one kill Reshi. We also get two prize cards. Netting us our other Tortuga, which is great. Which is definitely great. Basically setting up two Karkos does this game against this deck. So it should be fine. Goes for Reshi. Benches a Reshi. Goes for Tetene. No, wait, what? <laughs> Has double Heatran in this. For whatever reason. Doesn't have to Denise? Finds a welder, that's completely fine. There's a Heatran. Heatran is not scary though. Now that there's no Jigs attack, so why would you bench that? Why would you search for it and why would you bench it? That's what I don't understand. And yeah, I feel I definitely think once I Attack my my opponent's Reshi. He's going to concede. The skateboard doesn't even work, so then that's a waste. That's a big, big waste. And so all I need to do is essentially find another Pokemon to win here. Um. Yeah. Okay, so do I power up this guy and evolve, or do I... Yeah, I think that's correct. That seems correct to me. Do that, and then goodbye Reshi. That should be game, right? Yeah. That should be game. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? <laughs> yeah, so let's try one more game. See if we can get few topper opponents. We're at a win streak of 8 and playing quite a few different decks. All of them from the previous videos. So... Yeah. Let's see who we match up against now. Let's see who we match up against now. Okay, we win the conflict, that's awesome. Uh, once again, very, very bad hand to start off. Very bad hand to start off. But we have Stadium Nav, the four stadiums, and four builds to potentially find that tournament stadium. I will go ahead and energy spinner. I do have in my hand the potential to set up the Karen Costa that I want to. I would have loved to pull it off without it taking me three turns. So go ahead and pull it off and try again with another Jirachi. Having double Jirachi is never a bad thing. Having double Jirachi is of course never a bad thing. So let's see, still wish. That's not it. 
this definitely helps. I was about to grab the Marshall or Stojo thinking that it was the right stadium, but it is in fact not the right one. There we go. Pokemon Research Lab. I like the look of that. And then I guess I'll grab the Custom Catcher. I basically only need one turn of Pokemon Research Lab, I'd say. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna bench that and then we'll play this. And then I don't think I even attach. I, don't, I definitely don't need anything other than Caracostas against the fire decks. So that should be good enough. That should certainly be good enough. All right. See, well there for my opponent. We're obviously going to see the flare starter here. Not much else is gonna happen, I would assume. Uh, the giant hearth it can only benefit us. So no complaints right there. No complaints right there. Do I want to giant heart first? I think I do. Improve my odds of finding welder. Still a wish. Very nice. Very, very nice. All right. So definitely weldering onto one tier two gum. I guess I should have attached energy last turn. Find another welder. That's pretty okay. Find the escape board as well. And an energy spinner. So all of these cards, they just they help me thin the deck, right? Therefore, improving my chances of finding the right Pokemon for the right situation. So Stellar Wish. I already have a Welder. Do I want back to back to back Welders, or do I just want another Fossil? I feel like back to back to back Welders is more important. Yeah. And then I'll attach a fighting here to kind of tempt my opponent to not KO my this tier Tuga. I am missing the Caracosta now though. It's not easy to find evolutions, non-GX evolutions right now. Okay dear. <clears throat> probably finding the greens. Probably having to decide between Welder and greens at this point. So yeah, we lose a Jirachi. Not the biggest of deals. I think a big issue is what happens if your opponent like takes the initiative and you lose the three Caracostas, then you're in trouble. Right? Then you are absolutely in trouble. There's no Brooks grid, there's no none to support your way to recover. Tier two guys at all, and I'm fairly sure we're about to see double custom catcher or one custom catcher plus greens here. I'm fairly certain. Yep, there's a double custom catcher. That makes sense. I imagine he goes after this tier two guy. He knows I have welder though. He doesn't know that I already have the two fires, however. Don't mind the double Jirachi for sure. All right. So let's see if I can get this KO. If I can get this KO, I'm pretty sure we are in the money. So I'm gonna giant heart away a fire. I know I have more fires in the deck. This way I get to thin. I'm looking for Caracosta, please. Uh, sure. Oh, that's not Caracosta though. So can I get a Pokecom? I can, perfect. That should be game. 
That should, in fact, be game, I would imagine. This is crazy. It's crazy how easy these matchups are right here. It's honestly pretty crazy. I don't see any reason why not go for a full 4 4 line of Caracosta. And then my opponent even saves me the custom catcher. I'll go ahead and uh, replace the stadium to make sure that I am. Um, I am not getting bamboozled here by another like welder play. But even if I am, I have the hearth, the welder. I have decent options to recover. But yeah, my point is Reshi, Welder, Triple Fire. We treat KO plus reset temp. That would be a problem. That would certainly be a problem. If my opponent doesn't pull that off. If my opponent doesn't even reset at me, then that is going to be game. Yep, there it is. So three pretty straightforward games and wins with the fossil stack. Definitely impressed with how well it's setting up, kind of with the amount of pressure that it puts on your opponent's Pokemon. I, however, can see it having trouble with Mew Mew decks, though. I think that would be the biggest issue because when you're training one kills, sure, that's great, right? But when Mew Mew can effectively heal off damage, can one kill you back, um, I can see how that ends up becoming a problem. Against Reshi's Art less versions of Mew Mew, maybe that's where they have a much better chance, but overall they seem like it would be very tough matchups. But against anything that you have weakness advantage, you just trade so effectively that there's not much you have to worry about. But yeah, that will be all from me. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you people tomorrow for another brand new video. And hope you leave a like, it really helps out the channel. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe so you get notifications on our daily PCGO gameplay videos where we cover the top decks. And if you have time, if you want to support the channel, you can become a um, premium member by joining over on YouTube or you can check out our sponsors Millibots Gaming and Photon Store where you get 5% off your purchase if you use the tail one code um, when you're checking out or you can follow the link on TCG Player and support the channel for free by simply buying the cards that you were already going to buy. Thanks so much and until tomorrow. Bye bye!